All right, I think we'll get started. Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, to the welcome to the Drupal Security Panel. Uh, this session is proudly sponsored by Skipper, the Drupal hosting platform. Um, so Skipper is suited to organizations who want fully managed platform for hosting all their Drupal sites on a fully managed, high, high availability uh, Kubernetes and AWS managed services. Security is an important part of the platform. That's why we wanted to have this discussion specifically around security. Um, so Skipper provides a number of security features, including read-only containers to prevent any malicious code from being run on your site, uh, secrets management for securely storing API keys and uh, passwords, things like that, um, automatic certificate generation so that every site has HTTPS by default, um, and automated creation of sanitized database, database images, uh, Docker images for sharing uh, databases around from development environments and test environments and so on, uh, as well as account isolation. So we use individual accounts per organization for, for isolation. So yeah, please join us at the Skipper booth or contact, contact us directly at info at skipper.com.au. And with that, I'll move on to introducing our panelists for today. So first up, we have Nick Shu. So Nick Shu is the operations lead at Previous Next and the architect for the Skipper cloud hosting platform. We also have Lee Rollins. Uh, Lee has been working with Drupal for 12 years, known, nine of those as a senior Drupal developer with Previous Next, working on some of Australia's largest Drupal projects. And he is a top 10 core contributor, core framework manager, uh, and a member of the security team. Uh, we also have Joseph Sauer. So Joseph is part of the less visible team from the Department of Finance, who works behind the scenes to keep gov CMS distribution stable and secure. Uh, is also a provisional member of the Drupal security team. And lastly, we have Nick Santamaria. So Nick is a senior DevOps engineer at the Victorian Department of Premier and Cabinet. He spent his early career specializing in Drupal, eventually focusing on cloud native technologies such as AWS, Kubernetes, and Terraform. So welcome everybody. All right, so I've realized we've got a fairly short amount of time, so I'll get straight to the questions. Um, so first up is how has securing Drupal sites changed over the last few years? And I think, I'll, Pass this one to Lee first, but feel free to jump in. Uh, well, I think the I think the biggest change has been uh, moving to Twig with auto escaping in uh, in Drupal eight and nine. Uh, so it's much harder now to XSS um, for, to to leave XSS vulnerabilities open in your uh, code if you're a front end developer or a back end developer. Um, yeah, I mean, other than using the raw filter, it's near impossible to do that. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, you know back in the day you were a Drupal security expert if you use the filter XSS function, um, but now the the technology landscape in Drupal has evolved so much that like you can really specialize you know in, in architecture security, um, back end, front end, encryption technologies, so that uh, there's a lot more diversity and, and maturity in the security landscape. Things Anyone else can we jump in on that one? Yeah, things have gotten easier and harder. Like um, reflecting on this question, things have gotten easier, like things like certificates, things that like would, you know, years ago be a manual process that took a lot of stakeholders to make that happen. Like that just went away. But at the same time, we also, the apps that we're building are much more feature rich and include a breadth of like, they're very deep. They, whether that's a front end framework, Drupal, the hosting architecture, things have gotten a lot deeper too, so. All right, Joseph, you wanna to add to that? Um, I'll go down this part, thanks. Okay. All right, uh, the next question. How have you seen organizations responding to the advanced persistent threat of cyber attacks that has been widely publicized in the media recently? Who wants to take that one? Um, so yeah, having working in the public sector, this is like a thing that's kind of front of mind at the moment. Um, and you know, the upper echelons know this and they're investing a lot in like, you know, 
staff education for social engineering and phishing attacks. So uh, people are aware of it and, um, you know, and that is leading to like a, you know, a culture of security, which is a really good thing. Um, you're know, also doing stuff like making sure all of our, like proactively making sure our S3 buckets are secure and making sure all of our, you know, applications and servers are patched. So, so just, you know, really making sure we're nailing the basics. I also think it's legitimized tickets or, or raise the importance of tickets in people's backlogs that are security items. Like I think it really, like from us, like clients said, okay, cool. What, what can we do? Like, what can we do that's extra? What, what can we, how can we improve things? And I think that has led to greater adoption of security based tickets in backlogs as well. Um, it's really legitimized that from what I've seen. All right, um, next question. Uh, many organizations now have tens or hundreds of Drupal sites. What are some of the ways organizations are managing Drupal security across so many sites? And I'll pass this one to Joseph. Yes. To so it's like, as you know, it's like Cow CMS. We have uh, almost 300 government Drupal sites from about 100 government agencies in the production environment. And uh, these sites are built based on either Drupal 7 or 8. So it is a really big challenge for us. So uh, like some key like things like I want to mention is like in our organization. So the first one is like in favor of Drupal security, like the different ratings. We have a Gauss CMS internal rating. So for example, we take it a critical issue. It must be released and deployed within seven days. And another method we are using is that not only we have a operations team who take care of the code base update, uh, deployment, releasement, we also have a security team being set up. So we have dedicated security officer who is like actively monitoring the Drupal security update. Okay, thank you. Um, Nick, have What's, what's going on at DPC? I just want to take this opportunity to pimp out my 2 p.m. talk, which is uh, <laughs> 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 how to effectively uh, manage a fleet of sites. So I'm going to talk a lot in detail about things that we're doing to um, make that simple. But, you know, it comes down to standardizing as much as possible, automating as much as possible, and, um, and yeah, just really trying to maximize your developer productivity through not having to do anyone else want to jump in on that one i think i think that's really interesting um my answer my kind of preloaded answer was very technical around platforms but i think it's very true it's not like the technical side is, is can be hard at that scale but it's like governance is a big is a big 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 component of that yeah. yeah so i want to sorry i want to add one thing is like the, instead of the traditional way we also have a like set audit two to be set up based uh, based on jutney so basically we okay. can do a nightly set audit report to every site nice. and uh, uh another day let's see uh you know tomorrow's morning a security officer will review those reports and create a jury ticket for any suspicious behavior. Then the, wow. like the developer will jump in to like troubleshoot or discover what happened. Okay, That's great. Right. Um, I'll pass this next question to Lee. How are customers driving demands for increased security and what are some examples? Um, with the customers that, that I'm working with, I'm seeing that more and more of them have their own cybersecurity departments or special departments or, or staff. and. I know typically three or four years ago when you were building a site and go live, you know, you'd, you'd have a penetration test and you'd be interacting with the product owner on that. But now I'm finding more and more we're interacting with specialist um, cyber security teams at the client. Um, so it's kind of indication that this is being taken seriously now. I think, that's, I think that's driven things like two-factor authentication. Like those teams care about that a lot more. Yeah. I'd not... Not just, like they just understand why it's why it's you know such a, a critical part. Yes, yeah, so. I agree. From Gauss CMS is like two-factor authentication and web form encryption. They are mm. driven by the viral clients. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'd say right. that's okay. the other aspect. It's what you're storing too. I think people are looking at what they're storing now after recent announcements. All right. How, how do you think the Drupal community could collaborate better on improving security? Uh, I'm going to jump in here if that's okay and just give a shout out to, to Joseph. Um, the Drupal security team is a group of volunteers and not a huge group and everyone's doing it in there limited free time and so getting um, more bodies on that team helps and so Joseph's joined recently and you know, immediately had an impact. I think if anyone else has got an interest in that, um, you can go to security.drip.org and there's a form on there where you can apply, um, particularly with people with uh, skills in Drupal 8 and 9 because we don't have as many people with those with those skills. I want to thank Lee who uh, like encouraged me to share my knowledge to uh, Drupal security team and what I want to add is like from my personal experience is like, don't be a guest, contribute to Drupal security team. You can report security concerns, helping the tests, do the reviews. So Drupal is an open like community and I think it needs everyone's time and efforts to make it better. Yeah. What about on the infrastructure side of the things that we could be doing uh, uh, collaboratively around infrastructure yeah i think the grounds shifted a lot <clears throat> below drupal in the past four or five years like the landscape for actually deploying an application has changed and yeah drupal's no different so um i yeah so i, I think there's still work to be done there especially in the container space we have a lot of literature uh, like around a... sorry if you mean it more like a um like a community set of base containers or something like that yeah some something along those lines Be, like i think it's like i think we can solve it in a technological way like that and also through thought leadership in this new like we have plenty of literature around deploying drupal on a on a vm instance with you know nginx php fpm or apache that's that's a very well trodden path but um but moving into containers and yeah, it's so yeah, but I would love to see some base base containers created. Do you think um, do you think Docker containers suffer from I guess the the old inheritance versus composition problem where you know it's very hard to to, to add your own specific stuff if you gotta rely on an upstream container? Yeah, I, and I think everybody like there's a very varying degree of workflow in the community. Um, which it's, it's worth going through and defining what that is. I think if people are going through and <clears throat> using a composer-based workflow, then they would lean towards more using a PHP container. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I, I think that there's a lot of work to be done here. Okay. All right, I'll move on. Um, what are some of the most important changes developers can make right now to ensure their sites are secure? Uh, I'll jump in there if that's okay. I, I think if you're using the raw filter in Twig, don't. Uh, if you have a full HTML input filter, get rid of it. Um, yeah, just, oh, and obviously the forgotten rules, don't, never trust user input. Uh, I think, like, if you can um, set up automated composer updates in a CI pipeline or something, that is going to. Uh, and give you an immediate benefit. Um, like if your developers can roll in on a Thursday morning and there's a pull request with Drupal Core updated, boom, that's like several hours of productivity a week saved. Automated updates, yeah. And inherit a pull request based workflow if you don't, or if you do, then also include other members of the team to review. You'd be surprised how much gets picked up. Yeah, I would like just by collaborating. I would like to add one thing to the pull request review is that uh, we used to do a just a technical review, but recently we add another layer of review, which is security assessment. I think if if your team have like enough resources, it is worth to do this. Okay, great. Um, okay, so on, I guess it's more of a hosting side. What are the what are some of the key features of a hosting platform for 
hosting secure Drupal sites. Things I look only for. file systems. <laughs> you go. Say that again. <laughs> Go Santa. Ah, yeah, right. So, yeah, like Nick said, I had read-only containers uh, as, as something that's very important to us. Um, another thing is like role-based role-based access control for platform actions. Like, you know, who can deploy prod? Who can get a shell on an environment? Um, uh, yeah, web application uh, firewalls like a WAF. That's also another like thing that's becoming sort of mandatory for us. Um, in terms of being able to just block, you know, your OWASP attacks, but also potentially malicious IPs. Yeah, so WAF is uh, definitely essential. I also want to suggest that because many uh, sites are currently using Kubernetes, Docker Images, CI to build an application. So it is worth to add a container security too. For example, it could be a Docker Bench or Claire. So I uh, noticed that there's another session it's going to be happen. So if you're interested, maybe it's, it is worth to uh, get to know more. But yes, definitely uh, like the container security too. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, I've got one more question and then we might go to some of the, the Q&A questions. Um, so what do you see as some key technologies that are coming down the pipeline? that would improve security at both the Drupal and infrastructure levels? What's on the horizon? Yeah, I will start. So it's like we already mentioned about the WAF, which is really good for, it, very essential for preventing SQL injection, cross-set scripting, etc. And uh, I also want to mention about a set audit too give Jutney or any other available uh, like Drupal scanner a try. Uh, the third thing I want to mention is, if possible, maybe maintain a Drupal security logs and audits. For example, Kibana could be used, which is like quite be uh, quite helpful. So we can uh, monitor and audit those logs. It will be really helpful for us to monitor those suspicious behaviors. And the, the the third one is like yes, we already mentioned is like yes, container uh, security too. We got two uh, minutes left. Um, I got two. Oh, no, go say no. <laughs> Okay, I was going to say, uh, there's a new HashiCorp uh, service or product they've launched called um, is kind of like a, a enhanced uh, bastion host that can do, um, you know, talks with a, a um, like an OAuth identity provider, but then allows you to like SSH onto stuff, um, connect to like a MySQL database, and it all does that controlled by um, RBAC and logical groups of resources. So yeah, that's exciting. Um, I think right, you... things coming down the pipeline, uh, clouds. Clouds are getting way, way more smarter and way, well, they've facilitated us with compute. Now they're adding value. And a lot of that value is like in the last year or two, AWS WAF, for example, has shipped um, managed rules, rule sets, which cover your OWASP top 10. So a lot of that is there. So um, other lower level technologies around um, Bottle Rocket, which is like a lightweight VM. But um, yeah, I, I really think that there's a lot of really cool stuff just coming from cloud providers now who are trying to diverse, differentiate from the others. All right, we've got 40 seconds. Unfortunately, I didn't get that much time. I've got one more quick question. Any tips on how a team can progress towards preemptively addressing security issues rather than being reactive? I think we kind of covered that with with um, PR, like automatic updates. So um, yeah, thanks, thanks to the panel. I think it was really useful. Um, certainly enjoyed it myself. Um, any final words? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody, for coming along, and I hope you enjoyed Thanks, it. Thanks guys. for stopping by, guys. Yeah. See you all. <laughs> See you all soon.